Imagine a reality where you were fully tapped into your divinity. What would that look like for you? In a world where we are manipulated into surrendering our power and authenticity, there are those of us who actively heal and work our magic to help others step into their highest versions. My name is Cassandra. I am the witch, spiritualist, founder, creator, and poet of Magic of Eden. My mission and purpose is to fearlessly share my magic, art, and wisdom to help others reclaim their divinity through poetry and ritual magic. On my podcast, I'll provide tarot readings, reveal prophetic messages and visions, share my astrological insights, discuss, and perform my poetry. I'll also feature other creatives to ensure an infinite space of love, healing, and world unity. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Cassandra. I am the witch, the spiritualist, the founder and creator of Magic of Eden. I am also a published author, writer, and poet here to help you reclaim your divinity by merging the arts of poetry and magic. And if you guys are tuning in to the podcast, welcome back. I am super excited to be in you guys' presence once again. Now, the reason why I decided to come on here and do this video and also this podcast episode is because I am getting questions from my readers asking me what inspired me to write my poetry book and what do I want you guys to get out of it. Now, the poetry book that you guys or for those of you that don't know, the poetry book that my readers are referring to is this book that I wrote back in 2021 in April. It is called Eden. Reclaiming Your Divinity Through Poetry and Self-Expression, as if I should not know the name of my book by now, right? So I am going to be very honest and vulnerable in this video and in this podcast because it is about that time now. And I know that we all have a story to share. I know that we all have been through something. I know that some people may say, well, my pain is more or this is not as deep as this and things like that. And we often find ourselves into the cause of comparison. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to write this book. And I know that I don't really share a lot of my story and my personal life with people. And I felt that poetry was one way that I could start to challenge that. And At this time, when I wrote the poetry book, in all honesty, I was shedding a lot of my pain. I was shedding a lot of different things, and I really wanted to seek a way to heal myself other than just magic and witchcraft and things of that nature. There was something in me that I felt was missing, and the missing element for me was poetry. I have always been in love with words. I have always been in love with poetry, even back in high school and 12th grade, and even before that, even in elementary school, I always found myself gravitating towards writing and things of that nature. And the reason for this was because I felt that I could not linguistically articulate my feelings, my emotions, because I was afraid of people making fun of me. I was afraid of just simply sharing my story vocally. And I honestly, at the time, was tired of allowing silence to be the advocate for my fear. And so I decided to be daring and write the poetry book. And one of the things that I can say about this book is that it is extremely vulnerable and it is extremely honest. And that was something for a long time that I was afraid of because the book does encapsulate a lot of the memories that I have growing up as a child. And that was something that I was afraid of sharing for so long because I felt at that time or in my childhood and in my teenage years that it would be better for me to not air so many of my experiences out because it would embarrass or create some type of bad image as it pertained to the people that had played a role in my suffering. And in all honesty, at that time I was married and rest in peace to my former husband. And at the time, you know, I talked to him and just kind of said, you know what, I really do feel that I'm being led to write this book. And so I wrote it. And it was extremely hard for me because vulnerability was something that was foreign to me. It was a shoe that I just couldn't fit at the time. And in all honesty, I was just afraid. I was afraid of sharing my story. I was afraid that people wouldn't listen because I didn't fit a a certain physical mold that mirrored what they believed beauty would be. And I kept myself silent. And when I wrote the book, I said, this is just what I need to do. I needed to do this for me, but it's more than just me. 
And what also inspired me to write this book was the fact that I knew that if I were able to transcend beyond my pain and suffering, that I could give this to the world and help those who looked like me, who didn't look like me, who share a certain vibe or who had different vibes, or even just those who did not have a voice themselves, who found themselves gravitating towards poetry to be the outlet for them and express the things that they cannot linguistically articulate. And that was honestly one of the most inspiring things that I ever have experienced. And in all honesty, it was you guys. So to my readers, I really do appreciate the fact that you guys are <laughs> reading my book, that you guys are enjoying it. Thank you for those that have also pointed out the typos. I am going back and actively editing those things out, getting the book remastered and all those things so that it has a better appearance to the world. So shout out to you guys. I'm always about growth. and. I do feel, honestly, that one of the greatest challenges that I've had with this book, although you guys didn't ask, I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, is that I love witchcraft and magic. I absolutely love it. And one of the greatest challenges that I've faced as I'm actually writing my current book, shout out to that, right, is being able to share magic and ritual and ceremonial magic in a poetry book. I know it's not something that's seen very often. However, it's something that I'm 100% working on. And I have to be honest, I love the challenge. Now, in this poetry book here, I actually talk again a lot about childhood memories and things that I went through and things of that nature and, you know, not being able to fit a certain mold that the world felt that I should fit, at least those around me. And it talks about a lot of the abuse that I experienced as a child. This is not my current experience, by the way. My experience is way different. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there, or I just wanted to point that out. And again, it just talks about my journey through healing. And one of the things that I want to read to you is actually on the back of the book. And this basically shares everything that's about the book. This is the journey of a shattered soul who searched for her pieces in the withered hands of others. These are the footprints of a pleading soul whose scars were stories carried to the stars. This is the pain, the shedding, and the healing. This is the journey through Eden. And it's really interesting because when I wrote this book, I wanted to create a safe space for myself because I felt that I needed something bigger. It wasn't the fact that the people who were there for me weren't enough. It's just the fact that I knew that my soul was trying to transcend and go far beyond what was in front of me. Shout out to being the Sag Moon, right? And <laughs> to be quite honest with you, again, yeah, that's pretty much what inspired me to write the book. And again, I'm really excited to know that you guys are actively enjoying it. Now, what I want you guys to get out of the book is really just to be able for you to find your own voice, to know that you have a safe space here and to know that if I could be vulnerable, if I can show up and be who I am, you know, in this day and age where everything is fast paced and everything is just easily accessible, I want you to know that you too have a voice to share and you can do this in your own creative way. And I also wanted to connect with my readers on an intuitive level because I do feel that we don't really see a lot of people or poets who are merging their intuition with their creativity. And although creativity is a very intuitive thing, I do feel that there are so many different intuitive things that go into this book. For example, one of the ways that I wrote my poetry was sitting through meditations and figuring out what is it that I need to release. And it was through my ability to be in a meditative state that I was able to conjure these things that I had lingering within my subconscious. And with that came automatic writing, as I want to call it. And what I would do is I would sit there and I would just type or I would just write. Whatever came to mind, I would just do it. I would let my fingers just kind of do the talking, if you will. And that is how I came up with pretty much about 95% of the poems in the book. Everything or about 95% of the poems that were written in here were written once. I went back. I said, okay, this is good. I'm going to leave what it is because I felt that in that moment, it was raw. And that's what I needed for myself. And I am proud of that because knowing me, I'm someone who 
I've been told this before that I can be very stoic. <laughs> so I decided that I wanted to show a bit more of my softer side, a bit more of my intuitive side, a bit more of my creative side through words. And that is how magic, well, not magic of Eden, but the book Eden was born. And I really do love this book. And the reason why I do love it is because it is one of my babies, <laughs> one of many to come. And it really did help me to capture all the things that I could not say growing up. And again, I wanted to share my story with the world and connect with people, again, who had either similar experiences as me or different experiences. And it has really been a blessing to come out and share these things. Now, as the world progresses into the digital age and into AI, I know and I can feel in my spirit that we are going to need things that cannot be replicated with AI. And one of those things is arts, right? Art in this way, art that is authentic, art that you can feel, art that you can just be in, in total awe of, right? And this is another reason why I'm deciding to just share my story even more. And I'm also getting ready to celebrate my 30th birthday, which I'm super excited about, by the way, January 8th to be exact. Um, and this is something that I feel I am concluding as I maneuver on to the next project in my life. So I hope that this answered any questions that my readers may have had. If you have any questions regarding my poetry or anything like that or magic or whatnot, let me know down in the comments and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. Thank you guys for sharing space with me today. It has been well. It has been amazing. If you guys need anything from me, you guys can visit me online at magicofedna.com. You guys can also visit me on Instagram and follow along with me at Magic of Eden. I'll make sure to link everything down in the description box. Again, connect with me by commenting, sending me a message. I'll be available and I'm looking forward to connecting with you all.